So at the Seattle Times newspaper in Seattle, we made a decision to tell the story about the southern resident orca whale and why this animal is headed to extinction. This animal carries a very, very big cultural importance in our region. We knew our readers really cared about this animal. This animal eats salmon, which is the other most important animal here in the Pacific Northwest. So we had an iconic species with a very big story to tell about why it couldn't get enough to eat. And we decided to go every single place that that whale goes. We went to the far north end of Vancouver Island. We went all the way down to the end of its foraging range in California to tell the story everywhere that animal goes of how we are affecting it and why it's struggling to survive. So when we began this project, we thought we were doing a traditional newspaper series in which you kind of go away for a while and then you bring out your beautiful package when you're good and ready several months later. That's not what happened here. What happened to us is as we began working on this package, something happened. And that something was orca whale J35, Telequa, female in J-pod. She had a baby that she'd been carrying for 18 months, but that baby only lived for one half hour. And she began to do something that experts know orca whales and other sophisticated animals do, which is grieve. And so I made a decision to follow her as she's carrying this calf. She carried that calf for 1,000 miles in 17 days. Six million people were reading that story by the time I finished covering that journey of grief. And so in the newsroom, we made a decision to elevate the project, make it bigger, and keep covering the breaking news because these whales were in crisis even as we reported the larger story. So people asked, ask me often, well, where did you get the buy-in to do such a big project? Five people, 18 months, five special sections. By the way, I also wrote a book about it. Readers wanted it. I work at an independent family-owned newspaper. We can make decisions like that. They raised the roof for this. It was a glorious thing to be part of. I'm very proud of it. It wouldn't have been what it was without that team. This was a multimedia uh, presentation. So I was the writer, but there was also a photographer and a videographer and a producer and a graphic artist, not to mention all the editors who worked on this project, photo editor, project editor, my direct editor. I mean, it, it was really probably about 15 people in our newsroom uh, that were the orca pod. And, you know, but the, the colleagues with whom I won this award, you know, it really was everybody's project. And we, we built this thing as a team. We storyboarded every story together. We went out in the field together. So it was very important to do this work in the field. As much as it added so much time and expense and difficulty, you know, trying to get everything together, weather, waves, presence of the orcas, they're not necessarily going to be there on the day that you go out with these scientists. It was worth all of that just to be with them. You had to give readers the experience of being with this majestic animal, hear its explosive lung purging breath, watch it dive and leap and swim. It was the only way people also could understand their family dynamics, to see how these mothers were always with their calves, to see how these animals shared food together, to see that they are really actually societies of great antiquity. And the only way to get that story is to go get it. And unfortunately, I can sit here and tell you today there are even fewer orcas today than when I started, 72. And people often ask me, are you optimistic? Is it too late? Is it hopeless? Is it over? And I can say, honestly, I am optimistic. And here's why. They can do it. Salmon, orcas, these are not crybaby species. The orcas are the top predator in every ocean in the world. Salmon, they've radiated into every possible habitat since the Pleistocene. So these two animals co-evolved in this place that is the place for them. The only thing that's changed is us. We're the ones who have to back up and make space for them so that they can have the fish they need, so that the water is clean, so that the forests are there to keep the water clean. If we can't do it here with all the prosperity and all the good wish for these two species, I don't think you can do it anywhere. <laughs>